So you've written about teaching a course on cognitive science, and also you've delivered professional development to teachers about retrieval practice and cognitive load theory and other effective instructional techniques. Can you say something about the reaction you get from teachers when they encounter these instructional principles for the first time? While higher education tends to resist these ideas, teachers and schools are asking for more. So when you show them really hands-on strategies that are based in evidence, for instance, I teach how to manage different cognitive load effects, their reaction is often, they go, finally, finally someone is giving us useful tools and a language to talk about instruction and teaching. And I think that when they entered teacher training in Sweden, they expected to be taught things like this. I did. I remember I did. These overarching strategies, retrieval practice, using the modality effect. But as your training goes on, it just never happens. And in the end, many students are left wondering, why didn't I get the most obvious things that I was expecting? Is this really going to damage the students if they learn some of these techniques? No, I agree. That's a paradox because it's really not that hard to teach these things and show them and illustrate them. It's once you know them, it's, it's sort of, it becomes kind of, why on earth haven't we been told this earlier? And many of my, in the professional development courses that I have the opportunity to teach, that is often the reaction among the teachers. They're saying, why am I hearing of this so far into my career? Why now? They become almost angry about it. And I think it's interesting that some of these teachers have developed these strategies on their own accord, but now they get a language for it. Now they get the research papers. I think since these strategies are based on evidence, it's not that surprising that a teacher with a long career and a lot of experience comes to similar conclusions as the evidence.